I've been looking forward to seeing Rogue One pretty much all year. The ability to see it at a midnight screening was a brilliant experience, and there's something special about watching a movie with a huge group of people that are just as excited to see it as you. What I appreciated about this film is also part of what I didn't like about it. It felt as though it wanted to embrace Star Wars as much as it wanted to separate itself from it. While this created some great moments and opened up opportunities for new overall design and aesthetic, it also meant some of the moments didn't quite reach their full potential. The way Rogue One opens, I wasn't sure I was going to get the film that I had been so excited for. The film gets off to a fairly rough start with clunky dialogue and some pretty cliche moments, but when it does hit its stride, it really picks up in quality. Its place as an anthology film puts Rogue One in a unique position to shake off some of the Star Wars tropes, and this is especially true for the ending of the film. The third act of this film is totally jaw-dropping, and the excitement for this is built up over the film. I think the writers were aware that the plot couldn't be made engaging by itself, and while some of the trust was left to the action to be entertaining, the screenplay did a good job of creating likeable and compelling characters. It also pushed the film to some amazing set pieces in the best looking locations of any Star Wars movie. While this is great for some sequences, for the first act there is a strange amount of hopping around. Part of what makes the opening of Rogue One so clunky is how quickly it moves, and while this does fix up eventually, it leaves the story without a great foundation. The plot simplicity does allow for this to be cleaned up fairly easily, it's just a shame that there wasn't more effort put into making the film's flow slightly better from first to second and third act. And I think that if this had been done, some people might be slightly more invested in the story overall, although this wasn't personally an issue for me. I also want to praise the film for introducing some new ideas into the clash between the Rebellion and the Empire. The driving force behind Star Wars has been good versus evil since the beginning, but it leaves the Rebels and the Empire as fairly one-sided entities. Rogue One shakes this up a bit, and I appreciated it and think it made for some very cool moments in the final action sequence. The other thing that Rogue One's standalone status allows for is some really ballsy moves with the characters. While some are fairly one-dimensional, I appreciated the arc for a majority of the Rogue One team. In addition to this, there is a decent amount of subtlety in their characterization. There isn't a lot of time to be wasted in this film, and setting up backstories for every main character would take way too long. On the other hand, there were quite a few lines that were indicative of character relationships, and it sets up things well without being too overt. Which is kind of unusual for a Star Wars film, considering most of the characters talk without much personality and sort of just say what they're feeling. The heavy-handedness that I usually notice in Star Wars films was present in this film in a lot of really poor character moments, but they were fewer than I was expecting. In addition to this, the actual performances of the actors throughout the cast were really good. While line delivery wasn't always spot on, although still mostly great, what really sold the characters was the looks on their faces. This is something I really liked about Felicity Jones's character. There was always a subtle change in her expression that sold how she was feeling. The only really weak performance didn't have as much screen time as I was anticipating, which is good, because he was really quite distracting and melodramatic. He is Forrest Whitaker, and his strange three-syllable-at-a-time delivery was probably my least favorite part of Rogue One. What I most appreciate in this movie is the visuals. Rogue One is gorgeous, and it's this reason alone that I will be seeing it again. Despite the 3D, which wasn't very good, it's still clear to me that Rogue One is the most well-directed and designed of any of the Star Wars films. The cinematography uses so many different things to achieve the tension and excitement of the action scenes. The camera was kinetic, but it was also comprehensible, and the focus was also kinetic. I think the best aspect of the cinematography was the times that it would rack focus from one character to another. Besides what I'm about to mention, it made for some of the best moments of the film. The best moments of Rogue One, visually, were the landscape and establishing shots. The sense of scale that was able to be achieved was really something to behold. And the trailer showed off a lot of these shots really well, but the ones not seen in the trailers are pretty breathtaking and it made the experience a lot grander. Hand in hand with the cinematography was some pretty spot on editing. Although the 3D made some of the cuts a little bit jarring, it's clear that the action scenes were edited with a lot of restraint. Disney action films generally all cut incredibly quickly, and it was refreshing to see Rogue One change shots at a pace that kept the action looking good and on screen long enough for me to actually register the image. It was also cool to see some new designs show up. The continuity didn't allow for much change in design, but what was added looked really cool on the battlefields, space, and ground. However, it wasn't just weapons, troops, and fighters that sported new designs. There was a great general feeling attached to each of the locations. The city pictured in the trailer on top of a plateau felt alive. It was created with markets and pedestrians and overall felt and looked real. It also showcased the Empire's grip on the galaxy very well. While this is something that benefited from Rogue One's ambition to separate itself from the other films, the music is something that suffered from it. There were so many moments that would have been so perfect had the original music been allowed to play. 
By the end of the film, I learned to appreciate the twists on classic Star Wars score, but I still wanted the original score to make the moment truly perfect. What I heard of the music in the trailers was really interesting, and the way it twisted the original score was really cool, and gave me goosebumps when I first watched the trailer. It's a shame that this didn't make it into the film, but that's how it is. Overall, I can't really fault Rogue One for very much. There's a lot to love about it, and in general, it's super fun and exciting, and has some incredible moments. R R Rogue One, a, st a Star Wars a story? Uh, eight out of ten.